So, in our previous video we talked a little bit about summoning magic and uh, necromancy. And these, I said, are the most common forms of uh, dark magic. Fortunately, necromancy is kind of limited to um, the United States, almost exclusively. Um, but yeah, the summoning magic is used all over the world. Some other forms I wanted to talk about are elemental magic, symbol magic and chaos magic. And these are all very related. So while the uh, summoning magic and necromancy see in a way our reality as consisting of other conscious beings, um, symbol magic, um, elemental magic and chaos magic, they don't really look at these individual consciousness levels. They see it more as a, just a substance which can be acted upon, like a, like a chemical reaction, if you will. So elemental magic, um, I think, is a form of understanding the uh, basic components of things, how things are built up. Um, because from the view of an elementalist, we are like um, something built out of Lego bricks. So there are different elements which can be in different constellations, different vibrations, and by combining them together you get, for instance, a thought or an emotion or uh, a healing power or something else. And just like everything is yeah, built out of these building blocks, like amino acids creating, uh, for instance, an enzyme or an, a protein, in the same way elemental energies can be built into anything. And these elemental energies are also, um, yeah, they're in everything, but also responding um, to the planetary and uh, uh, influence of the other stars. And by working with these, uh, with these stars and these other elements, things can be transformed. And they can be transformed through an act of will, but also through symbols. So most elementalists I know, they actually work through their will. They just connect to the elements and rearrange them. Um, and it is in a way something we do unconsciously, because we are always growing. My thoughts are changing, my emotions are changing, my body is changing. And these transformations just happen naturally. But for an elementalist, you start controlling them. You become aware of how the different yeah, astrological constellations are creating a different influence upon your thoughts, upon your emotions. And then you learn how to work with that astrological weather to get very specific effects. Like, oh, if this Mars influence would do this instead of that, or if I would relate to it in this way instead, or in that way, <clears throat> it will have another effect upon me. So it is very much uh, about liberating yourself from this yeah, mechanical universe we live in and learning also how to yeah, work with these building blocks. So elemental magic is yeah, neither good nor bad, it just is. And the same with chaos magic and symbol magic. One of the um, problems of having a conflict with a person who is a skilled elementalist is that it is almost impossible to defend against because we are always surrounded by energies and the planets move you cannot do anything about it and we are just um, yeah, naturally responding to the cycles of the moon of the sun and of all the other planets and um, the influence of an elementalist can be very strong but also very subtle and um, unless you your own spirit learns how to control all these elements, um, yeah, you cannot really do anything about it or even notice it. So the only defense against the elementalist is another elementalist, you could say. Symbol magic is a little bit similar, but it doesn't limit itself to working with the elements. You also work with um, with symbol magic, you can also do summonings of energies, of beings, um, by using their names. You can also 
yeah, combine certain uh, symbols together to create blessings or curses, for instance, and create magical objects. So for a symbolist, um, a symbol is in a way you could say a higher form. And this higher form is then in a way cast down into a more limited form in our world. So if you've got a symbol for love or for war or for growth or uh, blockage, that can manifest in yeah an endless amount of varieties and forms. But what you try to do as a symbolist, you try to grab that energy, the essence of it, and to you may distill it down to something very specific in our world. And symbol magic can create things, it can also dissolve things, and it can also transform things. Symbol magic is a very uh, exacting science, so it requires quite a lot of study. And you need to be able to draw the symbols. And that doesn't mean just printing it out on a piece of paper, but actually also putting the proper energies in them and creating the connection to where that symbol, specific symbol, comes from. And symbols are in a way like a programming for the energetic uh, matrix, you could say. Uh, you could see the energy we live in as a kind of an electricity, and the programming decides whether it's like a you're playing Pac-Man or Space Invaders. So the energy responds to symbols by yeah, going into a very specific pattern or constellation which is dictated by the symbols. And symbols can be carved, can be written, can be painted. Uh, they can also be uh, sung, for instance, with mantras, uh, with prayers, or even with sounds and colors. So symbol magic is quite of a broad range. You just try to catch a specific energy and then get, a, get it to form in a very specific way. So symbol magic is very difficult to get precise. It requires lots of experience. Um, and one of the things I tend to come across is not so much the danger of symbol magicians using their skills for yeah, dark magic, but rather the problems they get themselves into by trying to perform symbol magic and then opening doors which they cannot close or getting effects which are not intended because their uh, yeah, skill is not uh, yeah, good enough yet. One of the big problems is that many symbol magicians tend to try to go too fast. And they start working with symbols which they are not ready for. Often symbols they have not found themselves, but they have discovered from a book or learned from uh, a teacher. And then they get into trouble. Because the controlling the symbol requires in a way that your energy body knows that energy. And knows the different variations how that energy can manifest itself. That you have a relationship with the source. And if you have that good relationship with the source, a kind of an intuition for it, then it will shape in the way you expect it to, at least part of the time. If you're starting to work with something you do not comprehend, then your level of control is usually, well, quite abysmal. And yeah, what will happen is also yeah, often out of your control. And things will happen if you use symbol magic. And this is, in a way, the addictive thing about it. So people try, often without any magical powers, they turn to symbol magic because this way they have power. But it is not the personal power, it's in a way just the power of the thing they're carving or writing or singing. So it is power without control. But, well, such people are... Yeah, often too power hungry and get into trouble. Sometimes often with very good intentions. Chaos magic is in a way you could say a variant of simple magic. Um, in a way, simple magic in itself has the uh, attraction of giving power to the powerless. And chaos magic takes that one step further. Um, because we naturally have 
our own uh, spirit as our limiting factor. So our spirit connects itself to a certain power and we may learn the symbol or the name of that power and then learn to use it consciously rather than only subconsciously as our spirit is always doing anyway. In chaos magic you're in a way um, consciously stepping out of your spirit's comfort zone. So you're saying like okay there are certain rules, there are certain laws, certain things which come natural uh, but what would happen if I go beyond natural and beyond my typical safeguards and as I said already with symbol magic it often goes out of control with chaos magic it can go even more out of control because you're consciously disregarding your safeguards in exchange for power so you're in a way trading a certain kind of harmony certain kind of stability for power um, this makes chaos magic very very difficult to stop or a chaos magician very very difficult to stop because they can always always generate more power than you can uh, but their level uh, their limited level of consciousness and control is also their Achilles heel uh, so don't try to take on a chaos magician head-on because that won't work but rather try to avoid whatever they're doing and to strike at their weak spot and often it is possible to create some yeah auto-destructive reaction within that uh, uh, magician um, often chaos magicians are not terribly well educated or ter terribly well skilled but the more skilled of them combine symbol magic and chaos magic so they can be uh, rather tricky persons to uh, to deal with you can combine it a little bit with a crazy person. So, um, as yeah, like I'm not a small person, and yeah, I can um, try to fight or to struggle with somebody else. But if I try to struggle with somebody who's on speed or um, who's yeah insane, they have a lot more strength because they have not the limitation of fatigue, they do not have the limitation of pain, um, they do not feel the strain or the damage they're doing to their own bodies while fighting with me or struggling with me and this gives them an almost supernatural ability to do things which I cannot and that's the same with a chaos magician, they're in a way um, disregarding uh, certain things which are constantly running in other people like I have constant background processes of keeping myself sane of keeping my uh, energetic protections up of um, yeah, digesting my food of breathing the air of connecting to the environment and most of the energy I have available typically is already consumed by all these background processes and the art of chaos magic is to be able to say no to all these automatic processes which take away my power, which uh, limit my exertion. So the, um, they are really uh, very very intense in, uh, in what they're able to do. The funny thing is that even though they're very intense, because the energy is rather uh, unshaped they can be countered very easily with symbol magic because symbol magic in a way imposes a certain shape on shapeless energies and um, so you can use symbols to bind the chaos uh, um, yeah the energy that the chaos magician is releasing if we're talking about curses symbols are often used for curses for making them chaos magic not so much it's more of a direct attack method and um, curses by using elemental magic those are definitely possible and they're often very hard to spot very insidious um, but yeah these are more of the rare arts which are taught in, uh, in magical schools in mystery schools don't come across them in the wild very much 
but there are many amateurs who are um, yeah, experimenting with chaos magic and symbol magic. So those are things you may run across in your, uh, in your practice. Uh, one thing to also realize is that uh, symbol magic is not easily countered because a symbol has a lot of power. It is kind of an eternal force um, which is in a way shaping reality, shaping the world. So if something is uh, done to you um, using a mantra or using a symbol, there is no real resisting it. It just happens because your energy will respond to that symbol, it's out of your control. Um, so what is important is in a way to try to in a way use other symbols or to try to wrest control over that symbol. So if a person is using a symbol to in a way uh, block my power then I can try to connect to that same symbol that they're using and try to get it to do something else or to reflect back onto the person so that their power will be blocked, not mine. Because the symbol will do what it does, but how it exactly works on or on who and or which person, which location it will work, that is controlled by the spirit. And you can use your spirit to go into a tug of war with the spirit of the of the other person. Obviously, magicians are strong-willed, very disciplined people, so it's not an easy thing to do, but you can build up your own willpower, your own discipline, and get better at it. <laughs>